Oh look, it's here. Electric fencing from Premier One. So I'm gonna go set it up and show you guys what it's all about. So this is what it looks like right out of the box. In this case, I have two fences, poultry net, and that's typically used for poultry and electric stop, which is typically used for sheep and goats. So these are the same nets I use on the farm. You might have seen me use them in previous videos. Uh, Premier One was kind enough to send me these two as samples so I can demonstrate to you guys and do a detailed uh, review. And before I go ahead and open these bags, I wanted to draw your attention to a couple details here. So this is the one I use typically for sheep and goats. Uh, this is the height, it's 42 inches. Uh, and it's uh, 164 feet long. So it's longer than this one over here that I typically use for pastured, uh, pastured layers. That's why it's called a poultry net. That's 100 feet long and it's uh, 4 feet high or 48 inches high. Now, you want to pay attention to the way this is packed because that's exactly the way you want to pack it for storage or pack it when you want to move to a new a paddock. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you can run into all sorts of problems and it uh, becomes an entangled mess. So you can see how it was packed or wrapped like that. That's this. That's the... That's exactly the way you want to wrap it when you're done with it. It's kind of counterintuitive because a lot of people want to wrap the spikes or the poles with the net. That's the incorrect way of doing this. So another thing I forgot to mention that you get with the package is this is a repair kit. Hopefully you would never have to use it if you maintain these nets properly. But it's there in case you need to uh, use it. Yeah, there's, there's one that comes with each uh, net. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a paddock over here, a small one, because actually not too long ago we grazed this area and that area over there. So I'm just going to set a, a small paddock using these two rolls of electric fence and I'm going to get the ewes and the lambs out for, uh, for a few minutes. I don't know if you can see that, that's exactly 30 feet. So I used some simple math to determine uh, the size of the paddock. So we just said that was 30 feet, it's going to be times 2 since we're going to have two sides. So that's 60. And then remember we have 164 roll plus 100 uh, feet roll. That's 264 minus the 60. That gives me 204 uh, left divided by 2 for each side, that's 102. So what I need to do is go, I need to go 102 feet down this way and then parallel another 102 feet that way. Now that I have marked my paddock with these stepping posts, there's one here in this corner, there's another one there and two in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and lay my uh, electric fence. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and move one of these mobile shelters inside the paddock, just in case it rains and if they need to use it. And also, I want them to get, get used to it.
as you can see here I use the double spike they have a one spike version which is cheaper but I always uh, go for the double spike one because they have a better grip So as you can see here, I have a little bit of a gap. My math was a little bit off. The reason being is I went beyond my mark by a few inches over here. Should have stopped here, but I wanted to make a corner with the pole itself. Uh, I could have stopped, same thing over there. But that's not a problem at all. That's, what, that's why I keep these small gate fences they call them they're 20 feet long so I'm gonna use that to uh, bridge this gap and now that my paddock is pretty much set up I still need to go back and tighten some spots but it's it's now time to energize the, the fence or at least install the energizer so to do that you need an energizer of some sort my favorite so far has been the speed right 1000 it's more than adequate for the number of fences I'm trying to energize and uh, you need a power source, in this case I use a deep cycle marine battery. Uh, don't try to use a car battery because it won't work. You can also use a solar powered unit. For the rod, the deeper you go the better. So try to use a long rod rather than a short one. If the, if the ground is too hard, you might need to use a hammer or a, a mallet. So you can see there how deep it is. So I take my ground. That's the ground. Goes right there. And then it's better to use red. I don't have red, red cable. But remember that's the hot one and then I hook it up here So here they are exploring their, their new paddock. So obviously the fence is not energized yet, that's why these newbies are testing it. Now the paddock is pretty much set up. What I'm going to do next is go back and tie the ends like this. You want to make a connection like this so, so that the two pieces are connected together electrically. And here I go back and basically stretch these corners using these uh, stepping posts. That gives the, uh, the fence some strength. Just like that. And you can see here why it's called poultry net. The, the squares or the holes are too small for a chicken of that size to go through. Again, it's not electrified, it's not energized, so that's why they're not getting shocked. But this is a good demonstration why it's uh, suitable for chickens. But if they were thinking straight, they would go through this one. Again, it's not energized yet. Hey, chickens, come through here. You'll notice that the uh, fence might sag 
in areas like that. The reason being is the land is not uh, level, it actually slopes down. Again, that's no big deal. To fix that, I use these stepping posts that you can also buy from Premier to prop areas like these. Now, the, uh, the theory of operation is pretty straightforward. The battery over here powers the energizer. The energizer delivers the shocks or the electric pulses and electricity flows from these filaments through the ground. And in the case something touches or something conductive touches these wires, electricity flows through that thing through the ground. So now to test it, you can use a electric fence voltage tester like this one. You can stick this in the ground. You can see that all of them pretty much are blinking. So that means it's up to 7,000 volts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Did you enjoy this video? Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button.